Generalissimo of China, Chiang Kai-shek, returns to Shanghai. At the airport, General Wiedemeyer of the United States Army greets him. For nine war-torn years, the Generalissimo has not been in Shanghai, and the people turn out to give him an enthusiastic welcome, breaking through police lines to surge around the official car. Almost a quarter of a million people pack into the race course to catch a glimpse of China's leader and to hear him speak. With Madam Chung, the Generalissimo mounts to the speaker's stand. The great Chinese port city, still recovering from its years of Japanese occupation, greets his speech with cheer. Chiang Kai-shek rejoices in his nation's return to peacetime life. In Manila, the United States Military Commission hears the final witness in the trial of Japanese General Masaharu Homa. Madam Homa takes the stand to defend her husband, accused in the Nitla's deaths of 17,000 American and Philippine soldiers after their surrender on the Bataan Peninsula. General Homa is called before his military judges to hear the decision of the commission. He bows before hearing the sentence. Upon secret written ballot, two-thirds or more of the members concurring, the commission sentences you to be shot to death with musketry. The accused will be escorted from the courtroom. Another Japanese war criminal will pay with his life for his savage deeds. Calling upon such public-spirited citizens as former President Hoover, President Truman acts to prevent starvation in Europe and Asia. The President has already urged Americans to reduce consumption of food by one-fourth to avert famine abroad. Mr. Hoover, who organized mass relief during and after the First World War, Herbert Lehman, chairman of UNRWA, and Commerce Secretary Wallace, join with publisher Henry Luce and Eric Johnson to help solve the acute food shortages. Secretary of Agriculture Anderson presents the problem. We've done a magnificent job thus far. We've contributed millions of tons of food, but we've not yet seen the job through. And I certainly appeal to every American to do everything possible in the way of personal sacrifice, to see to it that millions now threatened with starvation do not actually suffer and do not actually die. We have to strain ourselves a little more to make that possible. On Honshu Island, Japan, men of the American occupation forces set out for a holiday. They're headed for Shiga Heights, near Yudanaka, and an outdoor furlough on the ski trail. The snow-covered slope suggests scenery with which the Americans are familiar at home. There's the ski lodge high in the mountains, and the boys get set for the downhill journey. Not all of these young men are experts. Here is the very latest in home construction. In the state of Texas, a mammoth 60-ton machine lays 30-ton concrete houses, much as a hen lays eggs. Back into position over a mold for the building, the machine is lowered. Concrete is poured onto the top of the mold. After a 24-hour hardening period, the completed house will be lifted from the mold and carried to its site even miles away. R.G. Letourneau, developer of the amazing machine, sees it rise off the completed house on hydraulic lifts. The machine can make one concrete and steel house in little more than a day at moderate cost. 
Moving away to its next job on 12-foot-high pneumatic tires, the machine leaves behind a home ready for the finishing touches. Heating is provided by pipes embedded in the floor. Workmen chip away rough edges before the installation of windows. And here's the finished house, spacious enough for comfortable living. When they are produced in sufficient quantity, these house building machines will help to meet the worldwide demand for millions of new homes. The ruined city of Yokohama is surveyed by Emperor Hirohito on an unprecedented tour of Honshu Island. According to the Potsdam Declaration, the people of Japan will choose their own form of government. With this tour, Hirohito makes a startling departure from his former godlike austerity and launches his campaign to retain his position as emperor. The emperor leaves by car for Uraga to meet those Japanese who went abroad to colonize Japan's stolen empire and have since been returned. Among those visited by the emperor are some soldiers of the former imperial army getting DDT delousing treatment. Hirohito visits a hospital to speak to the men. This is only the third time since the war that the emperor has ventured outside the palace ground. On this day, he is seen by more people than have ever seen a Japanese emperor in recorded history. The imperial procession conducts the emperor back to his train. After seven hours of mingling with commoners, Hirohito prepares to return to Tokyo, where he may ponder the results of his empire's ill-advised wars of conquest. Madison Square Garden, New York, the world's most famous boxing ring presents the finals of the Golden Gloves, goal of every young amateur boxer. Heavyweight champion Joe Lewis started his career here. Tonight, these youngsters have their hearts set on a career in professional pugilism. And for the first fight, Wade Chancy in the white trunks slugs it out against Manuel Granda in the heavyweight division. Chancy, 19 years old, is just back from service in the armed forces. That's all for Granda. The middleweight bout. Frank Narditzi in white trunks versus Nick Kashuba. Kashuba presses the fighting and takes a commanding lead, but Frank's not through. These kids keep on until they're out. There goes Frank's mouthpiece, and there goes Frank. But he's a courageous youngster, and he comes up for more. But courage isn't always enough, and Kashuba is too much for young Narditzi. Eight, nine, ten, and out. 